So hot off the Milwaukee assembly line is the 2015 Harley-Davidson Road Glide. Uh, we just got the press release on this bike a few days ago and Harley managed to get one into our hands immediately. So we brought our cameraman Jay and my wife Maria along and we took the afternoon to spin around Southern California and see what Harley has wrought. Last year it was in hiatus. Uh, what they did with the gear off was introduce some Project Rushmore into the bike. It's got the new uh, high output 103 twin cam engine. Also part of the Project Rushmore was a redesign of the front fairing. Um, it's very similar to the old style one, but you'll notice especially in the headlight area up here, it's a, a different configuration. Uh, but more importantly are these two ginormous air ducts that they put into this thing. Um, it's just kind of a, it's a manual mechanical operation up here in the front of the fairing. You just click it and you can open up these big ram airs and it makes a huge difference on a hot August day like we have today. Uh, sticking with the front end of the bike, it's very nice up front. You'll notice that uh, everything is internally wired into the handlebars, except for, of course, the brake line. And then, of course, they've got the, uh, the new boom stereo system up here. Now, this is the base model Road Glide. There is a Road Glide Special. The Road Glide Special comes with the premium stereo, but having this base model stereo, I'd have to say it works rather well. The music's going to sound nice up to about, you know, 80 miles an hour. It does have a nice uh, uh, full color screen. When the sun's not glaring directly on it, it works really good, but with that direct sunlight, it can be awful hard to see. But beyond that, you know, it's placed up here high in the fairing, so you don't have to look down real far. On the, uh, the both sides of the fairing, it has these uh, two glove boxes, which are handy. They just kind of lift up and they're kind of weighted, so they just fall back down and close themselves and the weight keeps them basically closed. This right-hand side one has a USB connector for your your smartphone or your iPod or whatever. So moving towards the back of this motorcycle, um, you know, my wife Maria was along, like I said earlier, and what you'll notice with this kind of sloped seat is it, she had a hard time staying with me on the bike. Uh, you know, the new, that new 103 high output engine does, I think Harley rates about 106 pounds of torque. So, you know, it's pretty oomphy. It wants to get up and motor away out of the corner. But yeah, she kept kind of sliding back. <laughs> you could feel her grabbing on and kind of squirming forward. So you'd probably, you know, if you're going to take along your significant other, you definitely want to look at either an optional seat from Harley Davidson or possibly a backrest. Uh, another part of the back end of this motorcycle, something that we've commented on before in other Harley Davidson reviews, uh, another aspect of the Project Rushmore are the saddlebags that they've done. You know, it's a simple, just one release like this. You have access to the bag. You don't have to lock it. It is lockable right here, but you don't have to lock it to get into it, which is a complaint with us with other motorcycles. So once inside, you have a couple of quarter turn fasteners. Those pop free and voila. Bag comes right off. You have access to the rear wheel, the shock. Um, now that we have the shock exposed, this is gonna be one of the, you know, we've just harped on this over and over again. We know Harley Davidson likes their low seat heights, but uh, according to the spec sheet, this rear shock has exactly 2.13 inches of travel, which just is not enough. You know, on a smooth road going down the freeway, you know, you're fine. But anytime, you know, you start getting into maybe some back rows with some potholes or even, you know, the cuts in the freeway, and, you know, especially if you have a passenger on the back, it, you're just, you're gonna feel every little one. That's just not enough travel to make it a really comfortable motorcycle ride. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is a special model of the Road Glide. Um, primarily the same, the big differences are the special is gonna come with uh, the linked ABS system and it's gonna come with the uh, security option. Uh, and the other thing is color-wise. You know, they both come in this vivid black uh, the, the special, if you get a colored model, you know, I think they come in a blue and like a burgundy, uh, they will match the inside of the fairing to the outside. So with this one, it looks like you have a special because you got the matte black or vivid black finish, what they call it, and then you got the plastic interior. But you know, with the special, yeah, that would be colorized. Uh, they run about $2,000 more expensive for the specials compared to the standards. You can get like the ABS or the security system as an option on this motorcycle. But really, I think for the price, you'd be better off just going with the special. What I think is important to keep in mind though is both models come with cruise control. And it's for any, you know, touring bike, bag or something like that, if you're gonna do some miles, you know, 
cruise control has become just an essential part of motorcycling and you know once you've lived with it you don't want to live without. Harley makes a really good cruise control system. You can do it by just you know like mile per hour integrals or you can just hit it and it'll accelerate up to where you want to be and then stop and that's where it'll pick up. I, I really like this uh, high output 103 twin cam engine. It's, it's shaky at a stop, just like, a, like you want a Harley to be, but once you just pick up a few revs, it smooths out, and you know there's just really not much vibe coming from anywhere. Uh, seat, handlebars, or the rubber-mounted uh, floorboards. I mean, that's a smooth-running machine. Uh, you know, going down the freeway, it's got really good passing power, even with the passenger on the back. Um, handling attributes, fantastic. I mean, you know, it goes without saying that this isn't a motorcycle that you want to go out and push really hard through the corners. If you do, it's going to let you know. First, it's going to touch down floorboards, then it's going to soak up that you know meager two inches of travel on the suspension, and then you're going to hit something hard and you know get yourself white knuckled. So, as long as you're not riding it at 10 tenths, you know the thing actually does really good. Um, it'll go through the corners. It's very stable. You know, there's a nice reach to the fork arm bars for me. I you know not that I was going too far or hit me too far back. Um, could stay in control of the motorcycle at all times. You know, the power comes on nice. Transmission um, is, you know, Harley-esque. It's, you know, a little bit noisy, uh, a little bit clunky, but it works. Uh, the only issue I found was just trying to find neutral at stoplights. You know, if you don't find neutral as you're rolling up to the stoplight, if you're at a dead stop, a little, you know, to get it into that position between first and second. You know, otherwise, um, Really, for coming back into the lineup for Harley Davidson for 2015, uh, you know, it's priced correctly, and I think a lot of people are going to be welcoming it back, especially with these Project Rushmore upgrades to it. So, get down to your local Harley dealer and check one out for yourself. Maybe you take one for a test ride. If you want to know some more about the bike, go to motorcycle.com. The story will write, have a lot more detail. See you there.